bring everything down. Um, so we're thrilled that you're here. You will need a piece of paper and a pencil, though Ovi will be drawing on his computer. As we know, he is a fantastic teacher translating that from digital to pen to paper. And today we're going to be doing the frog that we were going to do last week that is in his card deck. So for us, I think everyone except Lincoln might have met, has met Ovi before. So Ovi, I'm going to turn it to you and you can introduce yourself. We'll see you in a bit. Thank you. Hey, Swale. Uh, good to see you guys here again. And welcome to Lincoln. So this is your first time in an art session with me. I'm, I'm really happy to see you here today. And today we're going to be doing uh, some Coast Salish art. And I'm originally from British Columbia, uh, Seabird Island Reservation. And in that territory, uh, Coast Salish art, that's basically where we're from. So I'm going to demonstrate some of that to you, for you guys today. I've been doing graphic art for about six years, and I specialize in Coast Salish art. And yeah, I'm going to show you guys some samples of that today. And then we're going to do a frog. And in our language, that's called Pipaham. And we even have the language cards coming out soon and this is the frog design and that's how you spell peepaham really cool design that's what we're going to be drawing today and uh yeah i'm happy about that really excited to share with you guys and i'll just share my my photoshop so uh this is the frog in the final version that I did, I, I kind of, aside from the card design, I just kind of did some editing on this frog. Uh, I used these trigons and crescents, which are um, elements used in Coast Salish art, like these crescents. I'm sure you guys are getting familiar with that and these trigon shapes. Uh, so we're going to be using those today to uh, build our frog design. And uh, this time around, I have some, some Coast Salish spindle whorls. Um, some of these are like 100 years old, and I want to share this with you guys, because this is kind of how I, I learned Coast Salish art. Like, I, I learned from other Coast Salish artists, and I, I looked in books and uh, online research, and sometimes museums would have their... Uh, their um, archives open to look through. So I would often find myself looking at uh, these older ancestral artifacts to study the Coast Salish art. And some of these are really cool. I love these designs. And you can see the kind of trigon shapes that some of you that have been following my classes have noticed we used a lot of these trigons and these crescent shapes. And uh, I like incorporating that into my art and being able to share that with you guys. Some of these are really cool. This is a Thunderbird uh, design right here with a human in the middle and very symmetrical too, which is kind of how I like to do my art style. A, a lot of symmetry and balance involved. And you can see all the kind of different variations of trigons and the crescent shapes here as well. Really cool stuff. And I, when I look at these, it, I kind of studied it and practiced drawing it myself to familiarize myself with the Coast Salish art. And that really helped me uh, develop my own style. So when you want to look back at your heritage, uh, you can often look towards these older designs as well to kind of help you out if you're ever interested in doing something like that. You can see another Thunderbird design uh, it looked like he caught a salmon. And you can see that a bunch of different crescent variations and these kind of stretched out trigon shapes. And you'll notice that's what I use in all of my designs, basically. So, oh, I got some of my, my own artwork here uh, to kind of show you guys, just for example. Uh, this is a like a cool river woman design that I did not too long ago. Uh, I used a lot of shading uh, to kind of bring out that pop out effect. 
And I did this in Photoshop. I, I mostly use Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator uh, to kind of do the editing and cleaning up the lines and stuff like that. Ah, thank you. Yeah, I did, these are some salmon. Uh, kind of, I wanted the hair to kind of, kind of look resemble a, a a river because the river is an important part of where I'm from, the Fraser River, and that's uh, really close to Seabird Island where I'm from. And the salmon, I love salmon, one of my favorites to draw and to eat, of course. Um, this right here is a cool uh, kingfisher bird design that I did. I took a photo and then did some editing in Photoshop and just used our Coast Salish trigon shapes and our crescent shapes and kind of kind of made a cool um, design with a, a photograph, all using Photoshop. So not only do I just draw in Photoshop, but I can do some really fun and cool photo editing too. Yeah, I really like that one too. Uh, this is another one I did recently. This is a eagle design, but I edited it in a photograph of the moon. So you can see here I used the moon as the eye, and there's the outline of the eagle. And I think in our last class we did uh, we did that, an eagle design too, a spacus. That's how you pronounce it in our Helcomalum language, spacus. So that's another cool uh, way that I incorporate my art into photo editing as well. Um, really, I've just been kind of experimenting with that, so it's been really fun. Uh, this is a funny one too. You guys, you guys are gonna like this one. <laughs> this is a raven design, and it's kind of like a parody of the raven steals the sun. In this case, it's the <laughs> it's the raven that stole the toilet paper. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the the shortage of toilet paper that happened not too long ago. So uh, I found inspiration in that, and I <laughs> I just incorporated that with some of my Coast Salish art and style. So that was another really fun design. And you can see in Photoshop, I add all these kind of different shading effects too to kind of make it pop out at you, just to make it more interesting to look at and give it some depth. So if you're looking to have some fun with graphic art, um, there's lots of different types of editing uh, software out there. Photoshop is probably one of the most expensive ones. But it's, it's a really great tool, and I've been using it for years. <laughs> when are we going to start drying? Okay, let's get to the drying. We'll definitely uh, get to this frog. So all you need is a piece of paper, uh, pencil, and maybe something that you can uh, trace a circle with, the circle that's going to be around the frog. That's going to be pretty important, uh, just to make it look a little bit more cooler. So this is the outline of the frog, and I'm going to lower the opacity, and we're just going to, I'm going to show you how to draw it just by drawing, drawing over my, my previous design. So if you want to do a circle around it, feel free to do so. I'm just going to make a circle here. And if you're curious about Photoshop, if you have Photoshop and have questions about it, definitely feel free to ask any questions. So I've been doing this for quite a while, so I know a lot of different tips and tricks on Photoshop. I don't know, are any of you guys watching right now using some sort of drawing app, or are you just using paper and pencil? And then I'm going to start with this brush. I think we're going to do the mouth first. <clears throat> and then we'll do the head around it. Just paper and pencil. Oh. Hold on. It's lagging a bit. Okay, let's start with the mouth.
so uh, actually, this is probably my second time drawing a frog. I didn't do it before, but I did it for the, I used a drawing app. Oh, that's cool. What kind of app did you use? Yeah, this is my only, probably my second time drawing a frog. And I really liked how, I, how it turned out. You using Sketchbook? Oh, that's kind of wonky. Oh, an Amazon app. That's cool. I know there's lots of cool free apps that you can download on your tablets and phones. I just haven't really looked into that myself. So there's kind of the mouth of our peepaham. And I remember last time we were doing the eagle, and I, I told you guys how to pronounce it in the Halkamalem language, Spockus. And there was a few other people that were telling me how to say it in, like, French and Spanish. So if you guys know how to say frog in a different language, let me know. So that's really cool. So we're doing the mouth here. And then we're going to have a tongue sticking out. So I've been doing uh, graphic art for about five or six years, and most of it was all from tutorials on YouTube. I didn't go to school for it. I was just um, watching and practicing tutorials every day for like a solid year before I kind of familiarized myself on Photoshop and Illustrator. So YouTube definitely came in handy. So being able to show some of this stuff to you guys is really cool because I wish I had that when I was kind of learning how to do Coast Salish art. Uh, I felt like I was just kind of winning it at first. Omaki. I probably didn't I probably didn't say that right, but I tried. So you guys can make this ton longer if you want. If you want if you want to make a really long frog tongue, feel free to do so. So that would look cool too. And so that looks that's looking pretty good for a mouth right now. I think we're gonna do an eye. And there's lots of different ways to do an eye in Coast Salish art. Um, doing the eyes are some of my favorite things to do. Usually when I draw an animal, the first thing I'll do is probably the eye. But in this case, I want to do the mouth. And if you want to color this in after, feel free to do so. Um, you can make it colorful as you want. It doesn't have to be a traditional green frog. My pen's skipping a little bit. Greno. Greno. That's French for frog. Did I even say that right? <laughs> oh, but you pronounce it Gnui. Grenouille. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. See, I'm learning some French today. I didn't I didn't see that coming. Then we're gonna do one of the trigons. We're gonna do these trigon shapes around the eye. Grenouille. I used to speak a little bit of French, but that's been a long time since high school. <laughs> so I've probably forgotten a lot. So I would say je ne parle pas en français, I think, saying that I don't speak French. But I know a little bit. So that's one trigon looking a little rough, but that's okay. We're just doing the rough sketch of it, just to kind of show you guys an example of how you would do a Coast Salish frog. And I like doing it in this ring, too. You'll, you'll see a lot of, like, uh, Pacific Northwest frogs done in, like, a ring design, um, like on drums, traditional drums. So often you'll see a lot of different animals 
in circle shapes, which is really cool because I do um, design work as well, like logo design. So I often throw de minimal designs in like a, a circle or something for a logo. And I'm not too sure if any of you guys, uh, I remember I did a logo session um, not too long ago, actually. So I'm wondering if any of you guys watched that one or followed along with me. Nice. You did that, Gabby? So cleaning up this. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I love doing logo work. Uh, it's really good to incorporate my art into as well. And that's another thing I had to watch a lot of tutorials on, just basic design and doing logos and stuff like that. So I did a lot of research on that as well. Something I didn't go to school for, but um, because I kept practicing and uh, kept getting good at it, uh, I just kept getting more and more work um, from a lot of different businesses. So I've been really fortunate with that. <clears throat> so there's the trigons, looking kind of rough, but that's all right. Uh, the trigons do take a lot of practice sometimes, but it's just something you can have a lot of fun with as well. So we got the two eyes, the trigon shapes around the eye. Um, let's do that eyebrow next. So almost looks like a, like a Nike swoosh upside down that we, we're doing here. And you'll kind of see shapes like this in a lot of old uh, Coast Salish art designs as well. I'm curious of any of you guys, other than my class sessions, have seen Coast Salish art before. Yours is not looking so good. That's okay. That's okay. And we're just we're just kind of doing a a rough design here anyway, just to kind of give you an idea of what Coast Salish art looks like. Yeah, we're all learning. Actually, I'm still learning myself. I still got a lot to learn about the history of our art. Uh, so I always look towards a lot of different books and a lot of research and stuff like that, because learning about the history. Uh, makes me a better artist to to basically know what I'm doing. So there we have the eyebrows. I don't have a, a like a, a drawing tablet, like a computer. Is that what you mean? Oh, well, that's okay. Like if you're just doing it on paper and pencil, that's fine. I before I did graphic art, I did a lot of paper and pencil as well. So we're gonna do the head as well. I think we'll do that next. And I should have mentioned earlier what you have on the background. I should have mentioned earlier that with the paper, you could have folded it in half to kind of give you a better line of where the middle is as well. Uh, mine's a little easier because I, I think what I did is just kind of used one of these where, whenever I put this ruler in the middle, it'll just click in the middle. So I'm pretty sure I use that. So we're going to do kind of an oblong shape for the head. If you wanted to make it just a round head, that's fine too. On the background of the picture. Oh, like the outline that I, I'm using. I, oh yeah, well that's fine. Then we're gonna do the head.
hopefully your frog starts <laughs> starts looking better near the end. So we have kind of the, the frog head in the middle of the circle. And then if you saved room, hopefully you saved room, we're gonna do the arms uh, along the side of it. Couple more features on the face, uh, the nostrils. Couple of nostrils right there. Another one right there. More like a monster. That's cool. That's cool though, because um, the older Coast Salish art are kind of exaggerations of what the animals look like. If you're looking at uh, old Coast Salish art, um, it's often depicted not exactly looking like a lifelike animal. It's more like an exaggerated form of the animal. So if it's kind of looking like a monster, that's fine. Because the frog doesn't exactly have to look just like a frog. I mean, the head shape of this frog kind of looks like a frog. Um, the tongue sticking out. Um, like when you look at this, uh, you know it's a frog. <laughs> so that's okay. Um, and I remember doing hands on Coast Salish animals. That was probably the hardest part for me. I spent a lot of time practicing doing Coast Salish um, like hands and paws and stuff like that. Um, I'm still practicing those a lot, actually. So I'm kind of a perfectionist and I like things looking right. So I'll spend a lot of time practicing them. Then we're gonna kind of do like a circle, half circle, coming up like that. And if I'm going too fast, just type in the chat that you need a minute and I'll slow things down a bit. And are there any other people here that would think about being an artist when they're older? Is that something you're interested in? Or are you just doing art for fun? I never thought I'd be doing art. So we have one arm on one side. And to get in between these fingers, we're just kind of going to do a, like a little, a little line to separate the fingers. Gabby said that she's maybe interested in being an artist. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, I never would have thought I'd be an artist, but here I am today. I, I thought I'd be like a, I wanted to be an English teacher. That was one thing that I really wanted to do. I was an industrial painter for seven years or maybe eight years. And I was painting stuff like um, all types of vehicles, I was painting all types of stuff. So I did that for a really long time before I started doing art for fun. Yeah, when I was doing art, I was just basically playing around for fun as well. <clears throat> I remember back in school, I would draw stuff like a lot of cartoon characters. I was into comics for a really long time. So I was drawing all types of different superheroes. I'm gonna have to zoom in here a bit so we can get these crescent shapes on the arms. <clears throat> and when I first did this um, design, I probably did this design about a month ago. I did it just like this, um, just a rough sketch. And then I brought it into Photoshop and made the, nice, the lines all nice and clean. I'm sure I showed some of you guys how I usually do that before, after I do a rough sketch. There's certain tools that you can use in Photoshop that will make your line work look nice and crisp and really nice clean lines. 
if I wanted to make a drawing on pencil and paper look really good, I'd probably use um, stencil shapes or rulers and stuff like that uh, to give me those clean lines. But when I do it in the Photoshop, I just have all the tools and the software uh, ready for me. So we're gonna do some crescent shapes around the mouth. I forgot about these. Ray also she wants to be an artist for fun. Um, oh, great. Same. If you want to uh, show us what you're working on, uh, Katie can enable your camera and you can come up and show it. That'd be awesome. Yeah, if you want to share your work, definitely. Yeah, just uh, say I'd like to share my work and I'll upgrade you to panelists. <laughs> Are you going to share your work, Maxim? Oh, that's awesome. Looks like Maxim wants to share his work. All right, a couple more crescents. You should be, have the ability to do that now. Let me try. Um... So good to hear your voices. <laughs> yeah, that is really cool. Um, Obi, if you could unmute nope. your screen, then I can pin Maxim and make him bigger. How did uh, I do that? Just uh, go to stop sharing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, still doesn't work. Oh, no, that's okay, Maxim. You can send us a picture and uh, let us know. Uh, yeah, show it to us, and we'll send it over to Ovi. Yeah, I'd love to see that. I love seeing the work that you guys do. Definitely makes it worthwhile for me. And trust me, when I was first starting out uh, Coach Sailor Sharp, I did not know what I was doing, so I was still learning, and I spent a lot of time practicing this. So uh, don't feel bad if it's not looking looking exactly like this frog here. This is long as you're getting an idea of what the Coast Sailor chart looks like. What's the email to send? I think uh, Katie will have that information. Usually she gives it out to, at the end of the session as well. Uh, that way I can view your guys' work. Mm -hmm. Because I would, I'd love to see that. There, Maxim, and I'll also show if you go to the Connected North at Home site. Maybe I'll just quickly share since we have new kids. I'm yeah, definitely. You guys, how to? I'm just going to take the power back for a sec, Ovi. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to show you, boys and girls, how to share your screen. Let me see. You might have to pass me that little blue ball back, Ovi. Sorry. Mm. How do I do that? Uh, see the little blue ball beside your name? Hmm. I'm not sure why it won't let me do it. Oh, you know what? Because my computer mouse is not working. I, I got it. Don't worry about it. I got it. <laughs> I figured it out. Please quickly show you boys and girls how to, um, how to send us your work. Oops. So you go to the Connected North at Home website. You guys can see my busy calendar. That does look busy. Yeah. Okay. And then you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the website. And on the right hand side, you'll see uh, contact us, put your name, your email, choose the file, go find the picture that you took of your work, and then uh, attach it and send us a little message. That's the easiest way. Otherwise, I'll pop my email and Mally's email in the chat for you. You can just email it directly to us too. All right. Yeah, I'd like to see your guys work. Okay, I'm just going to give you your superpowers back, Obi. Thank you. Oops, I accidentally gave them to Maxim, but that's okay. We will give them back to you. <laughs> I'm just going to... Sorry, guys. My computer is not very happy with me today. I how mine was earlier. Oh, I know. Just it has its moments, right? 
Yeah. Hey, you should be good. Thanks, Obi. Thanks for your okay, patience. Okay, cool. Uh, Owen wants to share, so I'll I'll let Owen share. Okay. You want me to, uh, do I need to pass you the ball back? No, that's fine. Oh. Okay, go ahead, Owen. I gave you the superpower. Do you have your camera on, Owen? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That, that, that looks good. Fantastic. That looks really good. Hank, hold it down, Owen. Hold it up just a tiny wee bit. There you go. Awesome. That's great. Good job, Owen. That's looking pretty good. And you got room for the body and legs, too. So that's perfect. Now, Gabby said that is cool. And Carol said that's awesome. This is a really hard one today. It is. It is a lot harder than the eagle. So. Uh, I think we're we're kind of advancing here a bit. So I think uh, what are we working on? The arm. So let's finish off this arm. And maybe if you maybe if you didn't have that circle on there, it would be easier. Because I can see when you have that circle in there, you're you're trying to make everything fit. So I guess that could be kind of a challenge for sure. I definitely see that now. But that was a really good job for following along for your first time. That was really good. I, I'm impressed. Oh, that's great. I can't wait to see that, Maxim. So we got one more hand here to do. And like I said before, the hands were the trickiest part for me. Yeah, that was that was great. Thanks Matthew got it, and it's it's really good. We'll send it to like you're doing it on Photoshop. That's not easy. Yeah, that's true. Or Sketchbook. He's doing it on Sketchbook. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, you've done a great job. I see it. Thanks for sharing it. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. That's awesome. Yeah, really glad you can uh, join me in this session today. I love doing these uh, these art sessions with you guys. They're so much fun. And I wish I had that when I was learning Coast Salish art. So me being in a position to kind of show you guys uh, some of the stuff about Coast Salish art is really cool. Oh, that's great. Appreciate that. So we're doing a couple more small little crescent shapes here. <clears throat> and if I really wanted to, I could probably, um, like this would be perfect for a drum design, now that I think about that. I've got a lot of designs that I've done within a circle and kind of uh, symmetry effect that would look really cool on a drum. <clears throat> I'm just kind of realizing that. So now we're going to do uh, the body, and um, it's basically going to take the top half of the circle. <clears throat> so we're going to connect it. What paints? Um, that's something I would have to look at, especially on a drum hide, because I haven't did a drum myself before. So I'm not too sure if it requires a specific type paint. And the kind of only paint that I'm familiar with is acrylic paint. But I'm not too sure what type of paint used on hide is required. Because I haven't did a drum design myself. Mm -hmm. But yeah, class right now. OK, thanks, Maxim. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Hopefully, you'll join our session again. Yeah, take care, Maxim. So we're working on the body here. And it's kind of coming down, connected to the head. 
And then we won't, I realized when I first started this design, I didn't have room for the feet. <laughs> so the feet are a bit cut off, but that's okay. And these are the legs. And it's bottom here. You can connect that to the circle if you want. Can you, what was that? I didn't, I didn't catch that. Bringing this leg up, connecting it to the torso. Can you shrink the image to fit onto the page? Like that? Did you want me to zoom out a bit? Now we just have one more side of the leg to go. Oh, the feet. Um, I don't know, because the, the, the legs would look really tiny if I made it smaller, so I don't know. I would have to try and uh, redesign this image, which I might do again when I do another frog design. But um, the finished one looks pretty cool. So I was happy with it, especially when it got printed on the card. It's always cool to see your designs come to life on uh, like those card series that I did. And I do artwork for different type of apparel companies as well. So you'll see some of my artwork on hoodies and backpacks and stuff like that. Uh, hopefully, I'll be making dress designs, too. Uh, that's something I'm be looking at. Oh, well, leggings, too. I, did, uh, I do designs for a legging apparel company as well. So that's really cool. So it's always cool to see your artwork come to life when it's put on different types of uh, materials and stuff like that. So we got one circle for the knee, the knee joint. And then another one on this side. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And in Coast Salish Art 2, you'll see a lot of uh, circle shapes that aren't necessarily perfect circles. Um, so that makes things pretty, pretty easy to work with when I'm doing them as well. Mind you, in Photoshop, you can make a perfect circle, like just with a click of a button, which is really cool, which is why I love using Photoshop. Uh, that crescent, make that look a little bit better. And I love the crescent shapes in Coast Salish Art because it kind of gives you that um, visual of flow and motion. Um, it just makes the image look a lot more interesting. Uh, I think in a lot of the, like the hundred year old designs on the Coast Salish murals, uh, stuff like that, what would it look like without the circle? It would still look pretty cool. So it doesn't have to be in a circle. I just, I did my original design in like that. So it definitely doesn't have to be within a circle. One more crescent here on the leg, and then we'll flip it to the other leg. We're almost done here. So <laughs> I'd be really loving to see what you guys have uh, drawn out so far, because uh, she was right. This is a bit more of a difficult design. It's not as simple as some of the other ones that we did previously. I think bird designs are my favorite. I like drawing eagles. I like drawing different types of birds. So when I had to do the frog design, it was definitely a challenge, but I really liked how it turned out.
Let's clean that up a little bit. You know, this might be the first time um, some of you guys, what's your favorite animal? Uh, definitely wolf. Like I said before, doing drying wolves are like my favorite, my absolute favorite. Oh, I was going to say, this is probably the first time uh, no one's asked for me to slow down. So if you guys are keeping up with this, that's great. So we did the crescents on the legs. And then we're going to do one more trigon shape on the body and then another one on top of it. This is basically a triangle but with some curves to it. And in Coast Salish art, you'll see a lot of trigon shapes, but not necessarily all the same looking, which is kind of like what I like to do with my art as well. I like to kind of make variations of these tri trigon shapes and it just makes the image look a lot more cooler. And then on the frog bottom, <laughs> on the butt, we're going to do some kind of like moon shapes, some crescent moon shapes. So we're almost done with this, our, our peepaham. Yeah, there's a lot more detail in this frog. And when I did this design originally, I probably I probably spent maybe two days working on it. So I really took my time. I wanted everything to look good. And then I did the background and I played around with the colors. Uh, all that definitely took me a lot of time. But I think when you do art and design, you got to have a uh, kind of a high level of patience. Because when I do my design work, I can spend like an entire day just on one small design. Because I like making things look, uh, look nice and clean. And obviously, this is not looking that clean, but it's looking pretty cool. But that's okay, because that's how a rough sketch works. <clears throat> so there's our entire frog. I think what uh, what I did next was I added some kind of fill-in trigons and I put that around around the outside of the frog body. Like I had a trigon here to fill in the circle space, the negative space. So we can add some more color on these shapes just to kind of give a, give it a more colorful look to the final version. Like I said, if you guys want to color this in, that'd be awesome. But if you just want to share your work, the rough sketch, that'd be cool too, because I, I just, I love seeing what you guys come up with. I was really impressed with uh, <laughs> that last one that he showed. Uh, I believe that was Owen. That was really good. So that really makes me happy seeing you guys follow along with this. Then another trigon shape in between the leg here and the head. I love playing with colors as well. Like I think I originally had this frog as a blue frog. It wasn't it wasn't green before, so I really love playing with different kind of colors. And then I just uh, I made the frog green, uh, kind of shades of green though. Not just a solid green, but it was shades of green, and it looked really cool. That's one cool thing about Photoshop is you can blend a bunch of different colors together to give it that really cool effect. And that's exactly what I did in the, the final version of the frog. After I was done drawing and cleaning the lines, I spent a lot of time playing with the colors. There we go. That's our frog. If you wanted to add in uh, kind of a pupil to the frog, you can do that as well. And there's our frog design. 
And just to give you kind of guys a final look at what I came up with in the end, uh, that was a lot of different, different playing around with the colors, a lot of different, uh, I added some shading to kind of give it that cutout effect. And I even put in some paper texture to kind of give it like a, a rough look to it. Lots of different shading in here on the colors. Uh, you can see I went from a dark to a red here to give it that type of feel that the tongue was coming out of the mouth. Uh, yeah, a lot of different colors in here as well. So I was really happy with this. I did a bunch of different uh, crescents and trigons around the outside of the frog to kind of give it a ripple effect, like was uh, uh, splashing on the water or something. A walrus? I haven't did a walrus before. That would be cool. I'd like to try and do a, a Coast Salish walrus design for sure. <clears throat> but there's our Coast Salish frog, our Peepaham design. And I was really happy to share this with you guys. I know this was a bit more of a challenging design. So for those that follow along with me today, i uh, really happy that you guys did so and took the time to do that. I love doing these sessions with you guys. And I'll be looking forward to doing uh, another one with you guys. So if you guys have any questions uh, about Coast Salish art, about any type of art, drawing, um, uh, Awesome work, thank you. Really appreciate that. And like I said before, I'd love to see your guys' work as well. So definitely feel free to share that. Yeah. Um, and Owen, I took a screen capture of your um, picture, or do you want, can I send it to Ovi like that? Or would you like to color it and send it to us again? I know you've sent us work in the past. he'll let us know but thank you so much Ovi again amazing work and I like how you break down the shapes and and really encourage the students as we're going along it's just been it's just fabulous yeah it's a lot of fun <laughs> okay great Owen um you know how to reach us so we'd love to see your work and we'll send it along to Ovi and everyone knows that they're more than welcome to do that and send us your work, Katie, it makes our day, really. Absolutely. I love seeing kids' work, I, especially it's so organic, you know? So I really love if you guys would send us your work. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. So thanks, everyone. Have a great day. What are we doing tomorrow?